Germany. And oh, look at that. The Rhineland demilitarized. There is another way of demilitarizing the Rhineland. That's right. It's war. Oh, but not with this chap. No, 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 no. Time for a coup. That's right. We're going to do the path in Germany that nobody does. That's right. Reestablish free elections. <sighs> We're going to go democratic, lads. One day, one day, PDX will bless us with a way of playing democratic that will actually be lots and lots of fun. I'm praying right now. Please, please, please. And I'm also playing with a fan-made mod. This mod, when you capitulate a nation that has caused world tension, will undo that world tension. So in this case, if Germany created a lot of world tension and I was to capitulate Germany, that world tension will be then undone. Hence, a de-escalation of world tension. And it does some really cool things for democratic nations. This was suggested in this second channel video here in the top right can you see that and this handsome chap made this mod let's see if it works but first star trek fleet command thank you for sponsoring this video is a free to play game for android or ios experience real-time combat in open world engage in the story driven star trek galaxy interact with famous characters from the next generation original to the jj abrams films my highlights is the space combat and i love the progression mechanics look at this uss enterprise Oof, don't mind if I do. Now introducing lower deck content, including new offices, refits, cosmetics, research, G5 mining ships, and the event store. Hey, check out the new office as well. We've got Tendi, the Rutherford. Not only that, but 30 brand new missions. Download Star Trek Fleet Command from the link in the description. Not only are these guys helping my channel grow, but the game's free. What do you have to lose? Click below. Select a national focus, and we are going to go as far as oppose Hitler, causing a civil war. We also lose MIFO bills. But luckily, we don't have to pay for them. Yay! Start. We're going to make Germany an economic powerhouse. So we're going to go for a little bit of machine tools and construction, electronics. And why not a little bit of uh, light tank recon for a change? Some civvies. Don't need an air force. And a navy, a bunch of old ships that we're not going to use anyway. Nah. Convoys for the win. Assign the rest of the light tanks. And the rest doesn't matter, because when the Civil War kicks off, all the divisions will become scrambled and we'll have to reassign them anyway, so we'll not bother with that. Now we wait. Oh no! Purge the Nazi scum from our lands! Oh no! The joke here is that Mr. H may have had limited success in his lifetime. Limited. Limited. Uh, but this gentleman here, oh look at this man. Great war leader, plus 20% extra attack and defense on core territory. Uh, this basically just means is you've got to go really badly in this civil war to lose it. You've got to mess things up really, really badly. But then again, are we the good guys? His hat's got a skull on it. Are we the baddies? Are we the baddies? Regardless, baddies versus baddies. Here we go. So Navy will merge those babies up. Boom, go here for shore bombardment. And shore bombardment has been reworked, you'll see. All the divisions, front line with the field marshal. Off you go. Sign your boyos here. Go, go, go. And get this. You know, because we're at war with a major power. That's right, total mobilization. Get this, it's permanent. As long as we keep a nice high war support, which we will, we have practically no consumer goods for the rest of the game. So economy, no problem. Push. As you can see, most of the battles we're winning because we're getting a massive 20% extra attack on core territory. It's stupidly strong. Total mob, eat some of your recruitable pop. So extensive conscription, otherwise you'll have no manpower and that'll become a problem. Oh, look at this. War on autopilot. I'm not even playing the game anymore. So see this here? You see this here? Shore bombardment is currently happening in this region. You see here, shore bombardment. And there you go. Shore bombardment is reducing their defense by 6%. What? Wow. That's is in their retreat, burning down their own homes. Come on, guys. Seriously. Do you love Germany or do you hate Germany? Decide. Come on. We love democracy. Well, we will later on. We're kind of non-aligned at the moment. So let's get rid of some fascism and some communism. Chip away at them ever so slowly. The war is over. We won, boys. Boom. And now we have to deal with all of this. Oh, dear. So just move your civvies to the top. Get those repaired. And then, yeah, fine. You're fine, okay? The Nazi leadership has been captured. Get rid. A new Germany. A new state. A new opportunity to build a new glorious democracy. Hang on a second. Military junta? Ooh. Light tank boy -oh. You know the rules. And uh, so do I. So, what your suspension? Auto cannon. Go for the breakthrough. Uh, radio will be okay. Uh, armor skirts and sloped armor. And extra ammunition storage. Which I found out recently it's free. Extra ammunition is free. But you just lose a bit of reliability. And we don't care for reliability. So who gives a crap? Boom. This is the baby. And that is a nice little baby. Fantastic. It's a little bit expensive, but the road to war is quite a 
way away. Let's go. Hey, look at this, eh? So, no war. Point to the war, but we're totally mobilized. Mobilizing the economy for what, eh? Hmm? Hmm? What's coming? The new state, that's what's coming. Reestablish free elections. We'll make a return to our democratic ideals by reinstating free elections to be held at the point in the near future. Near future? Near future? You telling me there isn't time scales for these elections? Is this really an election? Is this really democracy? Hmm. All right, we're gonna hire this guy. Anti-fascist agent loses fascist support. Yes, we need to do that because we need to gain as much democracy as possible. Elections have been reestablished. We need to go for the monarchist compromise, a constitutional monarchy. We need 40% support for democracy. Currently, we're at 30. So that is a problem. This guy, liberal journalist, gets 5% extra democracy. Then top it off, we can do some anti-communist raids. And then we can also rebuild the nation. Look at this. Look at this. Minus 20% consumer goods for 365 days. Uh, that actually puts us into minus consumer goods, which has no impact, but it reduces consumer goods below zero. So no consumer goods. Rebuild the nation. And look at these. <sighs> So many civilian factories. Beefo bills, do you think you're any good? No. Rebuilding the nation after a civil war? Yes. A new, better Germany plus 10% extra construction. Sure. A very late four year plan, but it doesn't matter because we've got democracy in our sights. Boom, democracy. Oh, and what's this? Rush, disperse three and four. This is gonna come so much in handy because we need building slots and we're not gonna get them through conquest. So building tall, Germany democratic. That's what it's all about. Monarchy, democracy, liberty. Freedom, anti war, um, uh, for the most part. Uh, and now let's focus on uh, spreading peace to the world. Oh, the great menace. Huh. Germany, you had one opportunity to redeem yourself. You had one opportunity to not go marching around Europe declaring wars. But oh well, it lasted five minutes, guys. We tried. The great menace! Ah, yeah, man. It's causing trouble immediately. All right, let's aim for a European Union. Yeah, I read that right. Bulwark against Bolshevism. Soviet trade relations minus 100. And also the Great Menace. Trade relations minus 100. It doesn't go below zero. <laughs> Why is it there twice? So we can't trade with the Soviet Union. And by the way, we can't trade with the Soviet Union. So the Soviet Union can't trade with us. And also the Soviet Union can't trade with us. We mean it so much, we've said it twice. Consumer goods. Yugoslavian aircraft purchase, minus 5%. Rebuild the nation, minus 20%. Total mobilization, 10%. Stability, minus 5%. Current requirement for the consumer goods, minus 18. Is this like... The only way I can imagine this in my mind is that the government is going to people's houses and collecting their TVs and microwaves and ovens and being like, well, you don't need consumer goods, so we can take the consumer goods back. <laughs> it's so dumb. Camera recording. I was just joking. Okay. Um, um, bye. A North Atlantic Treaty Organization. <laughs> Even Sweden will join. Ah, that's that's the thing. God, I love democracy. Right, we formed our alliance. Now we need to choose who's going to join. The Wabian membership. Austria, Czechoslovakia, and Hungary. Then Yugoslavia. And then declare war on anyone who's communist. And we have the Lowlands. And then we have Scandinavia. We need Scandinavia because what we need is to get the Baltic membership and the Polish membership. Because they're the most likely ones to get aggression from the Soviets early on. So, Scandinavia. Join me. Scandinavia, Norway has joined. Sweden has joined. And Denmark says no. <sighs> Out of the three of you, I thought Sweden would say no. Denmark. Seriously, bruv. Seriously. Next up, the Baltic memberships. Latvia, yes. Lithuania, yes. And Estonia, yes. It's all coming together now, boys. Next up, Poland. Lithuania just declared war on Poland. Oh, man, this is why we can't have nice things. The Soviet Union has declared war on Poland. Well, we asked for chaos, and that's exactly what delivered. The Danubian membership. Austria says yes. Czechoslovakia says yes. And I think for the most part, that'll do. Austrian pro-German sentiment soars. So you get to do Anschluss by a Event. It, it, I don't know why this is an option if you're democratic, but it is and I'm not going to complain and they voted for unification <laughs> It's so dumb. Uh, welcome aboard Austria. All right. Do we finish off Poland? Yeah Sure. Boom. And off you go. Germany at war again. Lol. Oh my goodness. Absolutely demolished. Hey, let's role play this. We're the world police, right? Liberate Kashubia. Don't know where that is. Do I take Danzig? That would be really funny. It will take Danzig. <laughs> this is an alternative Danzig or war, lads. Oh, Kashubia is here. Right. Okay. 
Right, this is the production we've gone with. As you can see, lots of light tank recon, lots of AA, lots of artillery, lots of light tank recon. Well, 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 what do we have here? little bit of intelligence there we go and this is the template that we've ended up with ideally i'd like to add on an extra battalion of artillery on just for extra soft attack we'll do that when we can afford it the autobahn is complete time for military factories so as you can see here world tension these are the ones that have caused world tension a lot of these are national focuses ignore this one ignore this one we're the good guys and then we scroll to the bottom we can see when nations have caused world tension and then they lose a war world tension drops for some reason it classes the winter war as a loss i mean kind of true kind of civilian factories everywhere let's take advantage of the perks of democracy yeah i know there aren't that many but relief of command 50 percent cheaper advisors for the win army regrouping logistics infantry expert and army offense and we just declared war on czechoslovakia Ugh. What, what, what are you thinking? What are you doing, lad? What are you doing? I'll tell you what you're doing. You're getting invaded, boy. Oh my god. Well, no one can complain about how good this division is. Engineer 2, do you know what that means? That's right. Flame boys. Cheap and cheerful. The Soviets have declared war in Estonia. It starts. All right, where do we go from here, lads? Do we just ignore East Prussia? Yeah, let's ignore East Prussia. Messing around with that crap. Off you go, lads. Declare war in Europe. Boom, off you go. Oh, look at those green winds. Can't pierce the tanks. Just steamrolling them. See, Putin, that's what happens when you invade the Baltics. I mean, Stalin. Oh my goodness, I am blown away by how much we're demolishing them. Look at all the research slots, too. I guess this is one of the other perks of democracy as well. Most of the focus trees that have democratic paths tend to have more research and research bonuses. I thought to myself, this template is probably going to be pretty good, but I just didn't think it'd be this good. Well and truly, new meta. This is where the grind begins. The wide front line. Wide boy. Strong boy. Italy declared war on Yugoslavia and France. Time for the world police to step in. Well, when I'm done with this. When you forget to select your doctrines. Oh dear. There we go. If the world tension was high enough, we could invite France to the alliance. France wants to contain the aggression of the Soviet Union plus 70 relations. I never even knew this was a thing. Have we ever paused to resupply? Have we ever paused to build planning bonus? No, we've just kept going. Aggressive battle planning from the border of Poland. Oh man, this is insane. Oh boy, French communist takeover in France. That makes me uh, incredibly nervous. Oh! Wait, hang on, no. I thought I was gonna say common turn. They've joined the allies. Uh, never, never mind. Okay, so this is the other mod that's installed. When you get over 200 civilian factories, you get a slow creep of consumer goods. It's like an anti-blobbing mechanism, and it's a way of quelling how big USA particularly gets late game. 240 civilian factories. Right now, we have 213, and we're suffering from an extra 6.5% extra consumer goods penalty. There you go. FLC modifier, 6%, which isn't too bad. When it gets to roughly about 10 15%, that's where it's going to become an issue, and that's why I have to pay more attention to it. But it's easy to fix because all you need to do is you delete factories, particularly in occupied territory, or convert your civvies to mills. Easy. Soviet Union, GG. So world tension is a problem, right? Well, not anymore. Liberate Silesia, minus 1.1% world tension. We're about to see world tension drop through the floor. 2%, Crimea, 2%. You get the idea where I'm going with this, right? This is what would happen if you balkanized the Soviet Union. Clearly the most base timeline. Those are some mighty fine borders. Borders to be proud of. World tension now is 0%. It's like the world's not having any problems, guys. So we look at world tension now. The nation that created the most world tension <laughs> is me. Oh dear, are we the baddies? And then we've got Russia, uh, me again. Italy, Japan, Germany. Yeah, you get the idea, right? But then we swinged all the way to their end and we see the peace of Vladivostok. Minus 62 world tension caused by Germany. See, we are the good guys overall. Creating an interesting world that where if you're democratic, uh, you can't declare war on anyone because world tension isn't high enough. Is this part of the plan? At this point, I was going to invade Japan, but it's impossible for me to do that now because world tension will never get high enough. So if you're going to use this mod, you're going to have to change the rules of the game to allow democracies to declare war. Otherwise, you just get stuck. All right, now we need to admire the world. Liberated by us. Minimum world tension. Practically world peace. Uh, uh, kind of. <laughs> Boost! Hey, you made it to the end. Now, this is the video you want. 